What's up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Marco Dupa, and that guy right there, that's Adam Obesius Rodriguez. What's up, Brewski? On tap for tonight. Let's just get right rolling into this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Book of Boba. Book of Boba. Book of Boba. Book of Boba. We got our our, our preliminary thoughts uh, before the finale, the mm -hmm. season finale. I don't know if it's going to be series finale. I don't know if they... We can talk about that. Yeah. Do you, if, you, if you think we're going to get more Book of Boba, if we're just going to get Mandalorian from now until eternity. Right. We'll see about yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, not to be outdone by Microsoft, Sony has thrown their hat <laughs> in the buying up everything in sight game, and they have purchased Bungie, yeah. which actually put Xbox on the map, ironically. So we'll talk about that. The Washington football team has finally revealed after, what, a season and a half or mm -hmm. two seasons of uh, waiting. We all thought, we were. what are they going to do? All of these names, all of these rumors. A lot of fan uh, uh, creation, speculation. Mm -hmm. I, for one, was just happy to just continue calling the Washington football team. I thought sure. it was, I thought it was a, a fun name and a fun reminder of... of why they are named that in the first place? Why they don't even? Why they don't deserve yeah. uh, a, a team name? Um, but here we are with the Washington Commanders. The Washington Commanders. So, good luck with that, mm. Washington. Uh, and last but not least, um, Mr. Puxatunny Phil <laughs> saw his shadow. So six more weeks of winter so uh -huh. all of you floridians who can't handle 45 degrees dude somebody came into the bar and I, you you would think that somebody had shot his baby in the face he was <laughs> oh so God. upset he's just like i can't do this anymore i can't i can't they're weak 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 and yet they walk around in jeans and flip-flops so no that's why here we are yeah all that and maybe some more we'll find out but before we get into all that uh Adam, please tell the people what we are drinking tonight. We've got the Founders Barrel Age Series Backwoods Bastard Backwoods Ale Bastard. Aged in Oak Bourbon Barrels. Here's a look at the art. Boom. Do we have a read? We do have a read. But we'll do it after the break. Do it after. Well, you heard it here first. This is episode 340 wow. of the One Beer In Podcast. There you are, my friend. So, so this is episode 340. Uh, thank you guys again for joining us. Like, share, and subscribe. You know the drill. Adam, take it away. The founder's a backwood bastard. Expect lovely warm smells of single malt scotch, oaky bourbon barrels, smoke, sweet caramel, and roasted malts. A bit of earthy spice and a scintilla of dark fruit. It's a kickback sipper made to excite the palate. Hmm. Uh, let's see. The ABV is at a skyrocketing 11%. Oh, I didn't see that when I got it. <laughs> sure you didn't. <laughs> okay. Clink it. Drink it. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. 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 <laughs> Pleasant back end. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, let's just jump right into it. Uh, Book of Boba. Book of Boba. Book of Boba. Fun to say. Book of Boba. Mm hmm. Uh, was super exciting during Mandalorian season two to get reintroduced to the man, the myth, the legend. Yeah. Boba Fett. Such a cool intro, too. 
Yeah, yeah it was fantastic. I, I think they... <laughs> I mean, we'll talk more about this, but I feel like they handled his character better in, in Mandalorian than they have the entirety of Book of Boba. Mm-hmm. So, he's introduced in Mando Season 2, has a great arc towards the end of the season. It's fantastic, action-packed, he's brutal, and it's super well-written, it's well-acted, uh, it's great. Yeah. So it gets everybody jazzed up for Book of Boba. Um, it gets teased at the end of Mandalorian Season 2. He takes over Mos Eisley. Or, um, not, yeah, Mos Eisley. Espa? Mos Espa? It's a Mos. One of the Moses. <laughs> One no, of the Mimosas. It's, it, it's uh, um, uh, uh, the, 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 the palace. Yeah, takes over Jabba's, Jabba's palace. palace. Jabba's palace. Yeah. That's what we're gonna call it because I can't yeah. remember which which one is which. And and nerds don't just don't. Okay, <laughs> I think I think it's Mos Espa. Is it not Mos Espa? I thought it was Mos Eisley. I know Mos Eisley is where we have the cantina and stuff. So it, it is. It's it all is. in Tatooine. It's Tatooine. True. That's, that's the how, entire planet. That's how Boba says it. Tatooine. 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 So anyway, yeah, I guess you could look it up. <laughs> um, at any rate. We get we get teased that he's uh, take he's gonna take over for Jabba. Well, not for Jabba for um, uh, Jesus, fucking spacing on all these. Na- it's it's so hard to keep up with all the names, places, <sighs> ships, it, yeah. it's fucking religions, crime syndicates. I mean, for all of the um, criticism that's levied at. St- the Star Wars universe, and we're going to levy some today. I will say that, uh, man, the world building. I mean, th- there definitely could be more worlds built. You have an entire universe at your disposal, but the world building in and of itself is is. You got the answers. Yeah. So, uh, in, in according to Inverse dot com, mm-hmm. <laughs> um. We have only heard of Mos Eisley in Book of Boba Fett, officially. Mm. But this implies that Mos Espa is the city that he's taken over. Go back up. Go up, up. Oh, never mind. Wait, keep going up? <laughs> <laughs> ah, never mind. Yeah. I was trying to figure out what, what, what homeboy's name is, who he kills at the end of Mando. He's... Oh, he, he's yeah. He's the freaky second lieutenant to Jabba. With the, the worm head. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. It's on the tip of my tongue. Yeah. And everybody who's a Star Wars fan is just screaming at us. <laughs> just, yeah, just look it up. Wikipedia. Wikipedia. Yeah, I guess we should just have... Bib, Bib Fortuna. Fortuna. Bib Fortuna. Bib Fortuna. Yes, of course. We should just have the Wikipedia just pulled up. For this entire segment. <laughs> so anyway, let's, let's just you know get into it. Book of Boba finally premieres, and it's doing what all the Disney Plus shows are doing. It's it's going at, well. I guess what a lot of um, shows that aren't premiering on uh, Netflix do. You know, honestly, Netflix seems to be the only streaming service that is doing the binge thing now. If you think about it. Amazon is doing episodic. Mm -hmm. Disney Plus is doing episodic. HBO Max is doing episodic. You know? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point that I didn't think about. Um, I think Netflix is like, look, we started this Ben shit. And it's the motherfucking thanks we get. And they're just going to stick with it. Yeah. I mean, people like that, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. People, even with the shows that come out on these other networks or streaming services... They get mad. They're like, well, how come I just can't binge this whole thing? Why why, why are we doing this week-to-week thing? It's not 1995. Mm-hmm. Right. Anyway, we're not going to go down that. Finally premieres. We are an episode away from the season finale, maybe series finale. We'll see. And mm-hmm. we have some thoughts. So let's yeah. just get right into yeah. it. Let's just get right into it. Okay. Uh, I'm assuming you're all caught up, save for today's episode right okay good yeah i am too so the latest episode we saw obviously spoilers spoilers Mm -hmm. um the latest episode we saw was the first that starred 
the Mandalorian. Yeah, they bring Mando back, and it was an hour long episode, like fifty minutes. Mm-hmm. And I thought for sure they were gonna do like thirty minutes of Mando, sure, and then cut back and do another thirty minutes where they him and Boba like cross paths. Right. And- I I assumed we'd at least get caught up to the timeline by the end of the episode, mm-hmm. um, and then this subsequent episode would be back to Boba. Yeah. Uh, from what I've heard, that's not the case. And we continue on with Mando. Honestly, the the pacing of the pacing of the Mandalorian episode is kind of indicative of my overall problem with the show itself, mm-hmm. which is that it's just it's so oddly paced. Mm-hmm. It, it like I don't really understand. I mean, I'm putting my own uh, putting my own expectations and whatnot on Boba Fett the character. That notwithstanding. I still don't really understand like what his motivations are. And it feels like the show has been building towards something. Yeah. You know, every episode seems more like it's it's geared toward like building to this big payoff. Mm-hmm. Which I guess is coming at the end of the series or the end of the season. Yeah. But when well, it's, every it's him riding a rancor. That's what it's gonna be. Yeah. It yeah. has to be. Yeah. Right? He's gonna ride a rancor into battle. Yeah. Uh Take Which, out some fish guys. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably going to be an all out war between him and the pikes. The, right. The fish face dudes. Yeah. And, but that, but that, that, that's like my whole issue with the show is that like it just feels like it's a lot of, it's a whole lot of build up and simultaneously it's a whole lot of remember this, remember that. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. And it just, when you pace a show like that, it just feels like it's going nowhere. Well, and not to mention half of the show's flashback yeah that's what i'm saying it's like it's all so you got you only get 30 to 45 minutes to play with and 15 to 20 minutes of it is is showing us how he got to where he is right which is cool i'm definitely like i like all of the stuff with the uh the tuscan raiders Mm -hmm. and all that shit it's cool but it's just like man let's do this in two episodes you know let's let's just jam pack the first two episodes or like two episodes in the middle with just all flashback mm-hmm. so that we can just get this out of the way. Right. Because it feels like we get like 10 to 15 minutes of present day crime lord stuff. It, it to me, kind of had the same issue that the first season of Witcher had where it's like the timeline kind of feels all over the place. Uh-huh. And it's it, it just isn't the easiest to follow. Yeah. Um, and I agree with you. I, I think a lot of the... As much as I like the flashback scenes, especially, you know, like the, the whole train heist episode and stuff like that, that was cool. That was very cool. Um, I, I just, either way, once I'm getting invested into one timeline, we inevitably switch to the other. Yeah. And I'm like, ugh, like, I'd rather it just stay consistently linear and, and, you know, honestly, I feel like a lot of the Tuscan Raider stuff could have been done, like you were saying, in a short amount of time. Uh, just so we kind of get it out of the way, and then we're able to like follow him through this crime lord era of his life, which we haven't really gotten much of. Yeah. Like I, I feel like we haven't really gotten much of anything. Like with the Pikes, I understand that they did the train heist thing to establish Boba, you know, pulling his weight with the Raiders, you know, helping them out, showing that they can trust him. And, uh, so on and so forth but it's also there to establish like his connection with the pikes and why he even knows who they are right Mm. but now they're taking over Tatooine apparently and we don't get anything that has anything to do with that train heist and why like he like you see what I'm saying like it it just Mm. seems like it was a it was a lot of stuff to just be like that was a cool scene yeah like what did it have to do with overall sure anything it feels uh inconsistent and sort of incoherently put together yeah um they could have they could have they could have flown over all of the you know he's a prisoner to the sand people thing and you know he's chained up and they don't trust him at first and then they got to learn to trust him and right. he saves the little boy and or little thing i don't really <laughs> know what the gender of it is um you don't have to gender sand people it's okay <laughs> right. uh and all, like all of that 
could have been like, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. Let's just gloss over that. Do we really sure. need, like how many times are we going to see that story? Right. They save his life, but then they keep him as a prisoner. Why? Why did they keep him as a prisoner? Just kill him. <sighs> or not. But like, yeah. what's the point of the whole dragging well, him around it, the fucking desert thing? I think it, the entire thing with with that tribe was supposed to indicate that there was some level of like, I don't know, so, like rules involved and, and, and some kind of, um, I don't know, respectability as far as yeah. like, they're not just, they're not slavers. Customs. They're not these like savages that we know them to be in, in the greater Star Wars universe. Right. You know, I guess they, they, they're trying to establish that. Like, not all Tuscan Raiders are the same. Yes. That there are different... I mean, they flat out say it, you know? They flat out say, yeah. you know, some of some tribes live violently and, and whatever, but we just kind of chill and, and do our own thing. Yeah, well, there was the... There's the whole thing with Anakin and, like, his breaking... Not one, one of his breaking... They're points. animals. <laughs> I killed them like animals. animals. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> not just the men. The women and the children, too. And you're like, whoa. And Padme was like, hell yeah. It's okay. Come here. Come here. <laughs> I want to have your babies. Uh huh. <laughs> this guy was a lunatic from day one. And she was like, impregnate. Yeah. Choke me, daddy. <laughs> Force, choke, Force me, choke, daddy. choke me, daddy. Force choke me, daddy. Sick. Yeah. Yeah. Not the best. So, okay. Yeah. Sure. We, we established that. That's fine. Did we, did we need like all of this time with them? No, we didn't. I'm not interested. We didn't. In the, I mean, I mean, they're just not that interesting. Beyond that, is Book of Boba Fett the place that we're supposed to take up all this time? Yeah. There's so much. There's so much lore. So much, uh, um, like fan dreamed story to to be shared. Only about Boba Fett, but instead we're we're getting all this stuff about the Tusken Raiders. And a little bit about Boba Fett. Yeah. And honestly, like, I, I was going to say, my, I, I, that seems like it's your biggest issue with the show is sort of that, that timeline. It's, the, it's just the weird pacing of the show. The pacing show. of the like show. It's, like go, it's not going anywhere. My biggest issue is, and mind you, I'm, I'm speaking from a semi a place of ignorance because I haven't seen any of the animated series. So I know that fills out Boba Fett a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, he's featured... Uh, somewhat and the Mandalorians and things like that um, but speaking from someone who's only seen the movies um, you know I I feel like the Boba Fett that they have portrayed since the first episode isn't the Boba Fett I know right you right. know like I, I don't know what happens in the, in the in the cartoon series but he seems like befuddled he seems uh, I don't know like inconsistently powered yeah. He seems kind of dumb. Um, he seems very... Altruistic. Yeah. The biggest thing... Like, I had a bad feeling... Uh, to, to, to quote Star Wars. I've got a bad feeling about this. Um, nice. From the first episode... I think it was the first episode... Where, you know, he is a, uh, a prisoner... And it's nighttime... And he comes to... And sees the other guy tied up. Yeah. And immediately it's like, hey... Let's get out of here together. Yeah. He wouldn't do that. Bubba wouldn't have done that. Bubba wouldn't have done that. Are you kidding? He doesn't know that guy. He yeah. doesn't owe him anything. At that point, Bubba, Bubba would have choked him out for, yes. for, you know. Thrown his body to the dog yeah. and said, okay, this is my way and out of here. It. Yeah. But Definitely. no, he, he from the, and I understand if you're trying to make him a kinder, gentler Boba Fett. But why? Look, I'm not even going to even entertain that. It's fine. It's fine. I say if you have an interesting story in which you're softening this character up into becoming an altruistic hero, fine. I'll ride with you. But you got to build him into that. And yeah. you didn't build him into that. From the very beginning, he's showing these signs of, of altruism and humanity that he shouldn't have, in yeah. my opinion. I mean, maybe I'm reading the character wrong, but I feel like a lot of people think of Boba Fett as this ruthless, like... He's not necessarily sadistic, but he's out it out for himself. So here's the thing. Boba Fett is perfectly written in The Mandalorian. And what yeah. I mean by that is The Mandalorian is Boba Fett. Right, exactly. He is the guy that everybody – like the way that he his show goes and the way that he is as a character is what everyone expected right. Boba Fett. Quiet, kind of ruthless. Yeah. 
but gets he, the job done. Yes, but he slowly kind of gets a heart. Right. So with with the Boba with the Boba show. I mean, for the record, yes, you are as a Star Wars fan doing yourself a disservice if you haven't watched the Clone Wars and um, uh, Rebels. Rebels, because oh, excuse me, those two shows are fucking awesome. But also, you're right. You shouldn't have to have watched all the cartoons and read all the novelizations and read the comic books and basically done your research to connect the dots for them. If you're somebody who is a casual Star Wars fan and you're just excited that they're doing some stuff with Boba Fett, Mm -hmm. your last encounter with him... If you didn't watch Mando, which you, you should, obviously you should sure. watch Mando, but even in Mando, he's fucking ruthless mm-hmm. and awesome yeah. in Mando. So if you're basing it just off of watching Mando and watching the movies, yes, you're right. The characterization is very strange and kind of like out of nowhere. He he seems like a different person, and they try to explain that in the scene where the flashback to when he saves Finnick. Mm. And he's explaining to her why he no longer wants to be a bounty hunter and why he wants to be a crime lord. But he doesn't want to be a crime lord. He wants to run a family. They're making it – they're like <laughs> – they're like combining being like a crime lord boss with being like the head of a, a mafia, like the yeah. head of a family. And uh, Which is cool. I like that idea. Like he's he's the head of this family. But – the way that they do it is like it's an actual family, and it's like, come on, man, <laughs> we're family here. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> in concept, you're right. In concept, that sounds awesome, and I feel like they're kind of trying to get that going with uh, Chrysanthemum. Is that that's how you pronounce his name? Yeah, the black uh, Wookie. The black Wookie. Black Chrysanthemum. I think. Black it's... History Month, baby. We got a black Wookie. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, you got him. He's obviously coming back. Yeah, like he they, gonna be he let him squad. go for a reason. He's gonna come back and help fight. Mm-hmm. Um, Fennec, obviously. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel they're like they're doing a thing with with Mando too because he's sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly, from... exactly. Mando's coming back too, so I feel like we're kind of building to him. Oh, and and oh, God, this remind. I, I take it back. My biggest issue with this entire series is the mods. <laughs> yeah, the, the mods. Like, leaps and bounds, the worst episode. And one of the worst Star Wars things I think I've ever seen. Is that entire chase scene. I wasn't that bothered by it. I was so bothered by it. I was incredibly bothered by it. I accepted it. and I, I took it for what it was worth. But I, I genuinely looked at it and said, it ain't Star Wars. <laughs> this is not Star Wars. But you know what's funny is Robert Rodriguez directed that episode, right? Yeah. And... <laughs> It seems and it like sucked. I'm dude, sorry. It seems like Robert Rod- Rodriguez has two speeds. It's either hyper disgustingly violent or like the weirdest, like corniest <laughs> yeah. child thing you've ever like. It's sure. either Spy Kids or uh-huh. it's from Dusk Till Dawn. That's yeah. it. He yeah. has two speeds and he doesn't know any other gear to go into. There's no in between. No, I respect it honestly. The but... man does not idle. He's no, like, <laughs> no. He's like we're going from first gear to sixth gear. That's I it. said this or that. You got two <laughs> options. <laughs> Which, yeah, I respect it, man. He's yeah. like, look, I have two visions. <laughs> Pick one. <laughs> And they're like, well, we can't have, like, fucking people ripping throats out. And he's yeah. like, well, you already answered it. Spy Kids coming up. Yeah, it's the Spy Kids book he just lays down <laughs> on the desk. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I I, um, I was very disturbed by that. Uh, but mm-hmm. he has, uh, either way, Boba has them as his, uh, uh, you know. Yeah. Guard? <laughs> I don't know. Well, yeah, I mean, to go back to something that you said before, his inconsistent uh, strength is really weird because, like, Mando is is a very capable bounty hunter. And, and that's what I – that was the first thing that I liked about that show was that they didn't paint him as, like, this goofball guy mm. or he wasn't, like – you know, he didn't get the job done. Like, he is – he has a reputation for getting the job done and getting it done quickly and, and proficiently. And I like that. Yep. I hate – I'm so sick of shows where we're supposed to, like, empathize with the main character because they're, like, this bumbling, like, sure. trying to figure – I don't I'm, – I'm, I'm done with that. Yeah. I don't need to see that shit no more. Yeah. I'm good. 
So when Mando starts and he fucking just annihilates a whole bar and slices that dude in half with the <laughs> door and he fucking I'm just dude I was like I am so in <laughs> this is the best. Well, and they kind of replicate that in the last episode we saw when yeah. he has the dark saber. Yes. And and even though he doesn't know how to use it, he still goes to work. Yes. And it's incredible. It's awesome. I still I, I had those same butterflies in my tummy. Loved it. I went Mm. <laughs> yes, this this is the food. This is the good food. Uh-huh. You understand? And the thing with the dark saber is that's another thing that like if you if you were if you were watching uh, Rebels, there's a lot of context I've given heard, to you. Yeah, I've heard there's a lot of, of of stuff that I'm missing out on by not having seen Rebels. I don't even honestly. I would if 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 you are so inclined and you have the time. To listen to me rhyme. <laughs> I would look up a list of essential episodes mm-hmm. of Clone Wars. I think I've already told you to do this. Yeah, yeah. Clone Wars and Rebels. I don't listen to you. <laughs> That's obvious. You're not my dad. It you'd only you only really have to watch like twenty episodes to really <laughs> understand. That's all? <laughs> Honestly, like between the two shows, like with Clone Wars Clone yeah. Wars for sure, because Clone Wars started off as a kid show. So oh, there's whoa. a lot of fucking filler. There's a lot yeah, of well, like kitty. And, and that's filler. the that's the problem. It's, it's not like I haven't tried because I I started watching Clone Wars. I got through the I think most of the first season. Yeah, you didn't even have to watch that. And I was like, this isn't very good. Like it's fine. It's a kid show. Like <laughs> you don't have to. You didn't even have to watch that. There's yeah. like two episodes in the first season that you have to watch that like uh, are consequential to the overall universe. Yeah. The rest of that shit is filler. Felt like it. Clone Wars gets really good. Like season five season six and then it's fucking over <laughs> and that's the thing it's like uh, again like the rpg that everyone tells somebody to play after the first 15 hours yeah, i swear yeah, yeah. it's awesome i know it's that's the best what, game ever and that's why i'm telling you don't watch it yeah. look up a list i'll even send you one i'll send you the one that i watched before i watched okay. the essential episodes and i went back and just watched the whole Everything, thing i was like yeah. this is awesome yeah. but you can just watch the essential episodes like two or three episodes per season sure. and then season seven is the one that Disney Plus made. Right, right. And that's the one where you have to watch the whole thing, but it's only 11 episodes. Yeah, and the episodes are only like 20 minutes or something. Yeah, like, it's right? still a kid's show. But it's not really. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> and then Rebels, Rebels starts off, and you're like, where is this going? But, man, it goes. Goes places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a great show. So, yeah. but back to your original point, you should be able to make sense of his character from Return of the Jedi to mm-hmm. this. Of course. You yeah. shouldn't be, like, blindsided. But here's the other issue. They have George Lucas, David Filoni, Favreau. David Filoni. Dave Filoni. Wait, <laughs> I right? Thought, I thought you said David Filoni. I did say David Filoni. <laughs> yeah. I know him. I know yeah. him super well. He uh, weirdly asks his friends to be more formal. <laughs> right. He, professionally, he's Dave Filoni. Friends call me David, Friends actually. Call him the whole thing. Uh, Dave Filoni and everybody else who's involved who's, like, really, um, you know, giving their all to the show yeah. and to the lore and all this stuff. They have essentially created an entire universe, race of people, lore, <laughs> legends, mythos based around just how cool Boba Fett looks mm-hmm. in Empire and Return of the Jedi. Yeah, I was actually it's funny. Uh, I was over at Red Light, Red Light as you should be, um, for the the Filipino release party. Mm-hmm. And um, Halo, Halo. Yes, Hala Hala. Uh, <laughs> and we were outside freezing our butts off. But in that line, I was I was speaking to our friend Rob, mm-hmm. and I was, shout out to I was, Rob. Yeah, shout out to Rob. I was talking to him about this same topic actually. And uh, he's someone who's seen all of the animated series and knows about. Okay, the, well then we should have him on and like should, fucking pick should. you out. Yes, I guess so. <laughs> wait, um, wait. Uh, but uh, essentially, that's exactly what he he told me. He said it seems like Dave Filoni, David, r- David Filoni, uh, d- uh, David Filonius, <laughs> really, really has a thing for Mandalorians. Yeah, like it seems like. It's it's so obvious he just focuses all of his love for the Mandalorians. <laughs> and yeah. it's no surprise that the Mandalorian is his, like, you know, his baby. Yeah. 
So I, I don't know if um if he is like mostly responsible for the 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 Mandalorians and the mythos and and the lore and all that stuff. I know he's like pretty essential to it. Yeah. I don't know if he's like the the genesis the of all of it, yeah. but like, <clears throat> I mean, what they what they do with Mandalore, the planet, and Mandalorians as a race of the people. Culture. Yeah. I mean, they do. They it it they it goes from like this middle like this le- little known thing where you're like, yeah, we'll just make them that thing so that this kind of makes sense to. I mean, look what it is now. It was yep. an entire planet, a race of people. They had a war. They were important to like the Jedi. They had they had this whole thing with um with uh, 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 Darth Maul, and they like even even currently like the whole thing with with they've got like these different sects mm-hmm. and they've got you know different religions with yeah. it because it's it was an entire race of people yeah. and the armor is not just armor like they're well, like but, in the diaspora now though though because they're all like in hiding yeah because the planet was destroyed and yeah, yeah they're all right. across the universe but like boba fett uh he 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 goes from just a really well designed character from the seventies. Yeah, that's all a he cool was. Toy. They were like, "This guy looks cool as shit." That's yeah. it. He's got like a fucking scanner and a rocket on his back and a jetpack and guns. He's cool looking. That's yeah. it. And they took that and they were like, "No, that's part of his race." <laughs> and every person on this planet. But wait, there's more. <laughs> and guns, weapons are right. part of their religion. That's who they are as a people. But it's funny because technically, Boba. Isn't not a Mandalorian. Yeah, no. he's, he's not part of that at all. He, he's a clone of someone who has Mandalorian armor. Right? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So he's not. He's not. He's not from Mandalore. He's not a Mandalorian. He has none of that. He has no allegiance to the planet and to the race of people. Remind me, is, is Jango fed a Mandalorian, or did he just have the the armor? Uh, so I'm, I might sound ignorant here, but from what I understand or what I remember, Jango is not also not like i think he is from mandalore but i think he <clears throat> i don't think he um from what i understand he's like a reject he he stole that armor okay is from what i understand mm-hmm. he fought somebody killed them and took that armor right and then the armor was passed down to boba from jango but jango is not like part of mandalore he's not yeah, a man part of the culture no yeah okay that's what i understand well he was i could uh, be wrong he was like a bounty hunter too wasn't he yeah so yeah, he, he was off on his own, not part of any like sacred creed or anything like that. Yeah, so yeah, that makes sense. And then yeah, then they use him for all the clones, mm-hmm. which again another like shoehorn thing. Yeah, right. But it, I, mean, I don't know, man. It's just so crazy. They go all over the place with it because like sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Like in the right. Bad Batch, it works. Mm-hmm. Did you watch the Bad Batch? No. Adam. <laughs> I know, but look, look <laughs> I wanted, so here's the good. thing, here's the deal, okay, um, I wanted to watch The Bad Batch, but I felt like I couldn't do that until I've seen Clone Wars, to get an understanding for, you know. There are a couple episodes in Clone Wars towards the end that you should watch to understand The Bad Batch. Right. And then, is there anything in Rebels? There's some stuff in Rebels that you should watch to understand the bad batch yeah otherwise you can watch it okay yeah so yeah yeah okay sure you need to watch it yeah i'll save it for the end of my i'm telling you this man yeah the bad batch is kind of up and down there's some episodes where you're like oh it's a monster of the week episode doesn't really go anywhere but there are some episodes that are absolute fucking killers yeah the first episode the 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 hour and a half like mini movie of Mm. a first episode one of the best Star Wars things I've ever seen. It's so good. Okay. It's dark. It's moody. Yeah. There's great action. It's well animated, well acted. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. Okay. Well, uh, you know, you're speaking to a guy who's uh, seen all of Buffy <coughs> and all of Angel. So I have exactly. zero problem with filler episodes, uh, zero problem with Monster of the Week episodes. So then just push through. I will. I will. I, I've I've been I've been waiting for the vibe to hit me to, to get through uh, to continue through Clone Wars. I get that. I get that. Sometimes you just not you just see it on the menu and you're like, not today. Well, and again, season one, as you've admitted, 
is a bit of a slog. Mm-hmm. It just seems like I'm not I'm not getting anything. I'm not getting no, that, anything no, out of it. There's nothing there. Yeah. There's nothing so uh, there's there's Jar Jar. Jar Jar is there. <laughs> Thankfully, he's he kind of gets yeah. he's pushed to the wayside for the most part. Figured. You really you really Clone Wars. You're really there to understand three things. I think. Um, the clones themselves, because they all get their own personalities right. and you start to understand them and empathize with them as like people and not mm. just fodder to be destroyed in this war. Right. Then and, they murder all the Jedi and you're like, w- okay. Yeah. And that, yeah. And that, yeah, that's, that is a big thing because order 66 happens during the clone wars. And you know, it, it's more sad when you have context for like how much they cared for their Jedi commanders. Right. And like your first thought is that all of the clones are just these they're just machines basically Mm. and when you get context for them and you get to know them you empathize with them so there's that there is obviously filling out um you get a lot more time with anakin and obi-wan so you got to fill out their personalities and then uh ahsoka Mm -hmm. she's like pretty essential to clone wars and you kind of get to know her and so when she shows up in mandalorian right it's way better when you know who she is, and it's I, even as someone who hasn't seen the animated series at all, uh, I knew of Ahsoka just because I know that uh, she's that major of a character that, like, just her her fandom has seeped into my Star Wars knowledge. Yeah, generally. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I'm definitely gonna I'm definitely gonna watch it, uh, especially because we're getting an Ahsoka live action show. Yeah, you definitely have to watch it. So, you know, as long as that stays on the rails you know should be worthwhile yeah you know i I think the biggest thing here is with bringing it back to boba i was just about to say let's get back to (laughs) back to boba yeah um i think the the big problem here and with the larger i mean the larger star wars universe and any really any real big pop universe especially in sci-fi is that if you have a character as cool as Boba Fett, if you flesh him out more and you flesh out the world around him more, it's always a gamble. Because mm-hmm. I, you know, I call it the Fonzie effect. If you get too much Fonzie, he's not cool anymore. Mm-hmm. But if he's just there in a little bit, perfect. Yeah, perfect perfect character. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I feel like we got that. I feel like that's kind of what happened where, you know, in, in all of Star Wars beforehand, Boba Fett's awesome. It, you know, except for in oh, Jedi, like yeah, yeah. <coughs> which was goofy and stupid. Um, <laughs> Wilhelm scream falls. <laughs> <up>. <laughs> um, yeah, terrible, <coughs> terrible. Um, but beyond that, like, it's always a gamble to have him more uh, uh, examined, I guess, and mm-hmm. to, to have more details about him as a person. It's just like me and celebrity, you know, like it, it, your image of that person can be ruined forever if you have a bad experience with them. Never meet your heroes. Never meet your heroes. And I feel like, unfortunately, so far with Book of Boba Fett, unless they really land this final episode, I'm going to be left feeling lesser about the character by the end of this, which is really unfortunate. Yeah. But it was a risk. So, you know, <clears throat> it kind of is what it is, but I just wish that they would have stayed loyal is feels a bit too impassioned but you know like just stayed truer to the character that you know we we knew and loved because he was so callous and cold and and cool Mm -hmm. (laughs) from the get-go transform him however you'd like him to be but uh i mean again like you said i feel like the the template was there from the mandalorian that was the perfect template for boba fett to follow And, you know, we what we got, I feel, missed the mark a bit. Yeah. I'll say this, my final word on the Book of Boba. I think their hands were kind of tied <clears throat> because uh, George Lucas made a choice a long, long time ago in a galaxy, galaxy far, far away, away. Yeah, to cast uh, this guy, I, for, I forgot his the guy who plays Bo- uh, Boba. Django and Boba. Tara, Tara Mu Morrison or something like that? Mm. Look it up for me, please. I don't want to butcher the guy's name. Um, 
Temuera Morrison. So they made a choice to cast Mr. Morrison long time ago as Django. Right. And and to use him as the guy who's going to be Boba and to use him as the face of all the clones. And what happens is you you get this very handsome brown guy mm-hmm. from New Zealand. Yeah. Like I'm I'm a fan. I think he's a good actor. I think he works for the character. I think it I think it all works. Mm. I think the problem is you have now you you've you've fleshed out this character right um you, in in uh <clears throat> attack of the clones and and going forward you're using this oops you're using this guy to be the face of all of your clones Django Boba anybody else but then the problem is you wait too long yeah. and now Return of the Jedi, Mandalorian, if I'm not mistaken, happens f- three to five years after Return of the Jedi, Jedi if yeah. I'm not mistaken. I mm-hmm. think that's the timeline. I could be wrong, but I'm 90% sure it's three to five years after yeah. Return of the Jedi. Yeah. Well, in, in Boba, they, they're still like the remnants of the... the exactly. The it's still there in the desert. Sarlacc pit, yeah. So... What you're telling me is the barge. This man who, I mean, he looks like Mr. Morrison. With all due respect, handsome man looks like he's in his late fifties, early sixties. Yeah, which he is. And that guy, is he? What? what? He's sixty-one. Oh, there. Yeah, yeah. I fucking nailed that. I'm usually yeah. pretty bad at that. <laughs> um. So, what you're telling me is, either he's been a bounty hunter. He, he as. <laughs> What you're telling me is in Return of the Jedi, he is 55, mm-hmm. or they waited too long, and now they have to write around the fact that he's so old. He's an older guy. Yeah. Because I truly believe if they had done this show or something like it 20 years ago, 15 years ago, with a younger Mr. Morrison, mm-hmm. Tamira Morrison, I'm not going to try. I'm not good at it. Tem- so I'm just Temuera, I think. Temuera. T e m u e r a. Temuera. We apologize if we messed it up. It seems like Temuera. Temuera. Uh, if we got a fifth, a fifty-year-old Temuera, a forty-five-year-old Temuera to work with, younger, more youthful in the face. Yeah, <laughs> I guarantee you the show is written differently. Sure. There's no. <clears throat> I'm old and I'm done with being a bounty hunter and I just want to be a crime lord. There's no. I don't think he gets his ass kicked as much if he's a younger man. I don't think – I think they have to write around his age. And that's the unfortunate part about casting this guy 20 fucking years ago yeah, and then yeah. bringing this thing back in 2022. I don't disagree. However, I must say, <laughs> even at his age – I mean, again, he looks great. Even at his age – I feel like they could have made him like old strong, you know, <laughs> yeah. and just made him this absolute master of his craft, yeah. which is, the you know, like the general idea that we got of him uh, from the original series. <clears throat> I mean, Her- uh, uh, not, uh, Han Solo is shaking in his boots when he finds out that Boba Fett is on his trip. Boba Fett? Where's Boba Fett? <laughs> right. And, and Rob brought this up, too. Uh, I'm just gonna paraphrase, but even even Darth Vader says, "Hey, don't kill him, okay? <laughs> right? Bring Darth, him in." Darth Vader has to check him, like, "Hey, the don't shit you, that you do, don't you do? Don't it. you fucking do right. it?" Right? Which, like, he is the most badass in the in the entire universe. Yeah, in the entire universe, second only to, to Darth Vader himself. And 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 let me just interject real quick. If you watch all of the Rebels and and Clone Wars stuff, Darth Vader, like the way that they flesh him out is not just. I mean, he's scary in the movies, mm-hmm. but the way that they flesh him out in this series is like he is the boogeyman of the universe. Right. So they they hype up how powerful he is in the show. Yeah. <clears throat> so that gives more context to the whole. Even if 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 Vader is worried about Boba Fett, right. everybody should be worried yeah. about Boba Fett. Right. Exactly. And. I just feel like that's not who we got. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's just, at the end of the day, it's not who he's we got. Soft. He's soft. He's soft. He's soft. Even, soft. Even if you want to say he's a 61-year-old man, ex-bounty hunter, like, he should be tough and grizzled and smart, at least. Smart. World-weary. Make him world-weary. Because right now he seems like he's, you know, doing this for the first time. Yeah. And it's just silly. I just, he is he is for the for the first time trying to be a essentially a mob boss, but his entire experience as this uh, this person living and working through the underworld should have taught him enough. They're making him an anti-hero, and he should just be a bad guy. Yeah, just let him be a bad guy. But There's it, moments where like he should have killed the assassin. Just kill the assassin. Yes, Fuck yes. it. Just kill that guy. I, I feel like that's where you see the edges of the star the, the the disneyification of star wars yes i want it to feel dangerous i want it to feel you know scary yeah. at times but i feel like they're just so unwilling to go there the only person in danger is boba fett he seems to be the only <laughs> right. person getting his ass kicked throughout the whole show consistently shelf. yeah and i don't like that i don't like that either i don't like it either <clears throat> uh, hopefully i mean because they made it seem like he needed to fully recover and that's why he sleeps in that thing and then in the last yeah. episode the episode before this week's episode he's fully recovered right he gets out of that thing and they're like congratulations sir you're fully recovered mm -hmm. so maybe that's their way of like um not making it so that yeah. uh tamira has to do a lot of stunts i guess he, and now he, he can he, finally like kick some ass i hope he had his sensu beans yeah he's ready to he's go in now the hyperbolic time chamber yeah. so finally hopefully that in in this season finale like he kicks a lot of ass i need to see him kick and kick a lot of ass i'm just sick. relentlessly though yeah i don't want to see him pull any punches i don't want to see him save anyone or he killed those stormtroopers dude yeah murdered them he broke his stick on one dude's chest he yes. fucking murdered that guy yes yes i mean he went rough shot on these dudes yeah. it wasn't even if i mean he was like the like he's like ah <laughs> fucking bringing that stick down on stabbing people he that's, didn't fuck around that's who i want to see that's yeah. all i'm asking for bring him back yeah please make boba dangerous again yeah yeah i can stand behind that all right, <clears throat> that's that's we spent. A well, lot. that's the show. <laughs> that's <laughs> it. So much time. That's all we got time that. for. Oh my <sighs> goodness gracious! I have a lot to say. Okay. All right, let's speed round, baby. It's not a speed round. We're just gonna spend a lot of time. Uh, next things next. We spent we spent you know x amount of time on the Xbox, Microsoft buying uh uh Activision uh, Blizzard. Activision Blizzard. Thank uh -huh. you. <laughs> and not to be uh, outdone, Sony comes in, and apparently they said that they, this deal had been in the works for about six months. To be fair, I know this isn't fun, but to be fair, the deal had to have been going through for a long time. Yeah, there's no way this. Sony execs wake up the next day after the Microsoft there's, purchase and go, "Who do we buy?" <laughs> there's, there's no counterpunch with these multi-billion-dollar companies. Yeah, no, yeah. So we'll give them that. Yeah. I'm not going to sit here and debate like when it definitely had to have been like six months in, in the works. So that's fine. Maybe the announcement of it was strategic, though. You yes. Know? Yes. Like maybe yes. they were going to hold it off a little bit longer, but decided to go ahead and announce it now, given what happened last week. It's interesting that that's the studio they choose to buy, that that's the studio that it they seems want to. personal. It does. It seems really <laughs> weird that that would be. The one that they would go after. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's strange because as far as I know, I don't know, uh, just Google Bungie and see, like, what other games pop up. The biggest game, obviously, is it, it, well, there's obviously the first three Halo games, which have no nothing to do with Sony and nothing to do well, with Bungie. Destiny, obviously, recently. Well, that was the one that I was going to bring up is, like, yeah. the, the, the game. Uh, they made Oni back in 2001, which is a game I played and wasn't very good. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're nunny. Um, yeah, for the most part, uh, I mean, you can go back to 1995. They made Marathon 2. I guess that's a series, Marathon. But yeah, b besides that, what put them on the map was definitely Halo. Yeah, and right now their claim to fame is Destiny. Mm -hmm. And which Destiny actually had some PlayStation early exclusives, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So there's a relationship there, obviously, yeah. already. So this may make more sense than uh, it may seem on paper. Hey, listen, 
I like Destiny. I thought I think it's I think it's a great game. I don't like that they're the way that they dole out their DLC. It feels to me like a cash grab um, because it feels like every new expansion is like forty to fifty dollars, and it's like, yo, I'm not spending two hundred fifty bucks on one game. I'm not I'm not giving you that because it's not. They're adding story elements and stuff in there. Yeah, yeah. they're adding content. Ten to fifteen dollars, I'll give you for for. I'm, I'm serious. Ten to fifteen bucks, maybe twenty. I'm not giving you forty more dollars on top of the sixty five I already spent on the initial game. And then when your next story expansion comes out, it's another forty bucks. The, yeah. At the end of the life cycle of Destiny Two, you wind up spending three hundred dollars on a game. That's crazy. But to be devil's advocate here, Destiny Two came out in twenty seventeen, so. Within those years, sure, they could have released another a Destiny three and a four, yeah, maybe a five by yeah. this point. But instead of that, they just worked within the platform, like we talked about games, especially games as a service, doing uh, nowadays and in, in, into the future, like really making a platform for them to make games and just add content into it. Yeah, and that's what they're doing. So if you if you take into consideration, you would have been paying that money maybe even more for a Destiny 3 and a 4 and a 5. We're talking, you know, if you're playing on PS5, $70 a pop. Yeah. You know, I don't think it's that bad of a deal, necessarily. <laughs> the only problem is you have to be someone who is within that community. Because I feel like it's very easy to get off the treadmill and not know where to jump back in. Well, the thing about that, though, is if they were to have made <clears throat> a Destiny 3 and a 4 and a 5... You have a reasonable expectation that these games are going to be completely revamped. Graphics are going to be better. There's going to be added features. Mm -hmm. There's going to be you know new shit to do on top of this new storyline. Sure. Versus having a game already fleshed out, all of the elements ready to go, and then adding armor and adding guns and adding new story elements... That's all fine and well and good. I don't think it's worth three quarters of the purchase price. You know what I mean? Like if I I'm suppose. spending, if I'm spending almost the amount to buy a new game, I want almost a new game. And yeah. adding a story, just adding story, because the thing with the Destiny DLCs is like, I bought one of them and sure. they're cool and all, yeah. but it's really just you get like a raid, you get like a. a you know, I don't know, a 10 to 15 hour story. Probably not even that long. Well, it, it, <clears throat> I, I feel like with Destiny, it's less about the story. Obviously, there's a story to, you know, dig into. There's all those, like, things you can read up on, yeah. essentially. But it's not It's not ever been really a story-focused game, to I mean, my it's got, chagrin. It's got a decent lore. It's got lore, but does it have a story? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, know. Destiny 2, I think, is it's better than Destiny oh, 1, for sure. For sure. Obviously. Obviously, but my point in saying that is really you're not paying for more story so much as you're paying for more more things to do with your friends. So if you're already in that platform, you guys play every Saturday at eight o'clock, you know, like clockwork. Then of course it, it's worth the money to to pay for that to just have new maps, new places to explore, new missions to do, and just a wider world for you to experience with your friends, basically. Yeah, I don't know. Forty dollars is not worth it. Forty to forty-five bucks is not worth it. I, but I, I think that's <coughs> generally going to be the future of, of gaming. Really, is is more of these like lived-in experiences, these live experiences, I should say, um, where you're you're getting a base game, uh, and then five years later, they're just adding more stuff to it. Well, the pricing just has to work out. That's all I care about. I mean, like. If the expectation, if, let's say, like, Rockstar didn't set the expectation that they were going to work on a GTA 6, and if they just said, look, GTA 5 is GTA. It's just GTA. Yeah, and we're yeah. going to, like, just add shit to it, but this is the game. Right. Because I agree with you. I do think the future of gaming is you release this base game, and we're going to do away with yearly releases. Right. It's just going to be... Cause it's, just it's, like seems, a, it's a platform, basically, that they build upon. Yeah. Yeah. Because it just makes more sense, honestly. It, it Let's say a game like Madden 
just comes out. I mean, Madden's gonna Madden's a little different, so don't like don't kill me on this example because I know that Madden as far as the money is concerned is different. They have cover stars, they have sponsors, all that other shit that's gonna But let's say a game you can like still that. do that with seasons though, <clears throat> you know? You can have a, a Yeah, but you sell more copies. I think they I think they bank on you know, kids seeing Pat Mahomes and and Lamar Jackson and, and Josh Allen like on the cover of the game and going, That's my favorite football player and buying the game. I think there's a portion of that where they just go, Let's pick a cover athlete because it's Madden tradition. Yeah. And people expect it. And I don't think it would work if it was just a digital download of like, here's season five, Pat Mahomes is the cover of season five. I don't think it would work. I don't know though. Especially if you're talking about kids, you know, like Obviously, Fortnite is huge, Mm -hmm. so Fortnite has seasons, and and kids eat that shit up. That's true. So if you have a season, if it's Pat Mahomes' season, you know, you get that download, and and maybe you get, like, a special skin or something. I don't know. Yeah. Like, incentivize them to download that specific version of it or or pay for the season pass, Mm -hmm. and you get your money right there. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe less money, but you got to spend less to manufacture and, and... print out all those cds and uh whatnot yeah, that's what they say and they still charge us the same amount of money if you get a digital game versus that's, a, that's another a problem for another day uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so i mean i don't know they buy bungie what do you i mean what do we even really unless they have some game in the works that they haven't talked about maybe destiny 3 is right around the corner Could and they've be. been and they've been working on it for ps5 i'll tell you this if Destiny 3 is right around the corner mm-hmm. and it's like a PS5 exclusive, yeah. phew, sign me up. <laughs> I'm jumping yeah. on that. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. man, I just I, I wish that I could play more Destiny. I jumped back in like six months ago and I was like, this game's still fun. Mm. And like going from planet to planet, you know, uh, beating up on the, you know, it's like a PvE slash PvP game. Yeah. If you see some guy in your server and and he's just randomly running around, you guys can team up and just go yeah. and do a raid and stuff like that's fucking cool, it's man. It's a great game. It is. It's a really good solid platform to to make other stuff. From. Yeah. Um, and I wish more of my friends that I game with, I could convince them to get back into it. Yeah. Yeah. Like we play Call of Duty all the time, and every every week we play this fucking game, and it drives us all crazy because <laughs> it's broken and basically unplayable yeah and it's filled with hackers and cheaters and there's I, have you seen the flying car oh yeah i've seen the flying car <laughs> it's awesome it's amazing yeah. and that's the thing man it's so crazy that you can't even get mad anymore because the hacking is so belligerent yeah it's like that's hilarious the yeah. guy just flying around crashing into people and the fucking i was watching i was watching a couple streamers and and they encountered a guy who's flying in the car and the guy was stream sniping them so they they mm. asked him they were like hey let us get in and <laughs> we want to see what it what it looks like to From be in the there, car yeah. <clears throat> and he did nice. and they did it and it was fun and everybody had a good time and stuff but at the end of the day imagine that that's the state of your game activision is this massive <sighs> company just got bought out for billions of dollars and this is the state of your game. You introduce this anti-cheat software that everybody was supposed to be excited about, and not only does it not work, you have people actively mocking you in the game. Yeah. <clears throat> and continuing to cheat. The game's unplayable, and yet we play it every week. And, and yet, I'm, the top-selling game in 2021 was Call of Duty Vanguard. There you go. Yeah. It do, it didn't deserve it. Vanguard's not a good game. Not really. The single player is pretty fun. Maybe. Yeah, I haven't even played the single player. <laughs> it's so. pretty good. I liked it. Well, that's I mean, Call of Duty always their their story mode is always a fun like yeah. like uh, Michael Bay, Jerry Bruckheimer sure. movie. So it's it, always fun to play. This one I recommend specifically. Quick aside, uh, just because it, it's it's a bit more of a like uh, Inglorious Bastard style. Yeah, uh, which is fun. A fun fun diversion. That's cool. Yeah, Vanguard should not be the highest. No. <laughs> It doesn't deserve it. <clears throat> it's not good. Definitely the multiplayer is not. not good. It's yeah. not good. It sucks. Yeah. And then, like, the Vanguard guns get all broken and, and whatever. Anyway, uh, I, I would like to convince more people to, to jump back into Destiny. So, if I can't convince people to jump back into a four-year-old, five-year-old game, I can convince people to jump into a brand new game. Brand new one, yeah. 
And that would be fun. Yeah. So if that's what they've got, I just wonder what else can you really have in the works from Bungie? Well, I would love for them to have a Destiny 3 uh, around the corner. Uh, because, like you, I love Destiny. It was a good time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'd actually be more excited if they came out with something brand new. Yeah. Uh, maybe along with a new Destiny. Uh, because they're obviously a really talented studio. Hopping directly from Halo to Destiny. Mm-hmm. I'd like to see what's next on their sort of <laughs> list. And they, uh, even if it's not a first-person shooter, because we saw what happened with like Horizon... Mm-hmm. Uh, Zero Dawn, like that team made the Kill Zone games and suddenly went to this other completely different uh, type of game and, and hit it out of the park. And I feel like Bungie's definitely capable of doing something like that. Yeah, it doesn't have to be armored clad first person shooter right. game. It just doesn't have to be that. The yeah. possibilities are endless. Yeah. So, I mean, either way, I think this is a obviously a smart uh, purchase from Sony. Yeah, and uh, but all this does is is heighten my fears uh-huh. of like what's about to happen. The biggest names, the big companies in gaming, are just going to start buying up these companies. It's going to be a monopoly, sure. and it's really just going to be. It's not going to be, you know, four four three four Rockstar and 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 Activision and and. Insomnia and all these other studios. It's gonna is be it, isn't it three four three three four three. You're right, <laughs> four three four, three four three. Uh-huh. It's not gonna be these studios working on the, all these independent games. It's gonna be Sony making games right. and Microsoft Microsoft's, making games, yeah. and then and Nintendo. N- Nintendo going, is gonna be, hey, I heard that that new Pokemon game is the shit. So yeah, I'm probably it, I mean, gonna grab that. It looks it looks good. It yeah, looks good. I'm interested. I just literally have told myself, you can't buy another game until you beat persona 5 royal why why do you need to be persona 5 takes forever why do you need to beat that you're telling me <laughs> <laughs> i'm in uh september of my year uh, how many how many months are left a few a handful royal gives you another semester of school too so dude no there's uh, no way <laughs> are you insane well look okay look i've already broken that rule i have horizon the new horizon yeah uh, pre-ordered, so I'm gonna be getting that one. Yeah, but beyond that, I've told myself, look, stop getting games. You have enough games. There are too many games. Hashtag too many games. <laughs> stop getting games. You have enough games. There's there are too, too many, many games. games. Huge, huge. Um, yeah, I have too many games. So I, I'm just trying to force myself to get through other, like prioritize what I have. Essentially, mm-hmm. maybe not Persona. Maybe I'll, I'll just. Maybe will beat Ratchet and Clank. I have that one. You haven't beat that? I haven't beaten that one yet. So, uh, yeah. That's the main... I don't get you. The main <clears throat> you get all these games, <laughs> and then, like, I don't, know how, I don't know how you could bounce out of one game and then work on another one. For me... I I I'm I can't I can't I can't touch another game. I'm working on I'm on. That's how when I had when I had COVID and mm-hmm. when I was working from home, I was like, well, I, when COVID was like full swing, I was like, oh, we're not going anywhere, so I'm playing these games. Yeah. And like Spider Man, I just play ex- exclusively. <laughs> that was sure. it. Red yeah. Dead, Uncharted, yeah. yep. Ghost of Tsushima, like do just uh, uninterrupted mm-hmm. gameplay of that game. Yeah. Focus in. Yeah. Yeah, I don't get how you can bounce out of a game and then move on to something else and then be like, "Well, I'll, I'll revisit that," yeah. you know, when I feel like it. I don't know. It's hard. I I'm fickle. Yeah, I'm fickle like that. You know, I'm I'll be it. into it one day and then be like, this "Other things calling me." <laughs> you know, uh, 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 you give yourself too much temptation. It's true. Well, and that's exactly what I'm trying to curb. You know, I'm mm-hmm. I'm trying to avoid other. I'm, I'm trying to avoid the temptation and just. You know, focus on what I got. Uh, what's it called? Knockout. Uh, uh, yeah. Da, 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 mm-hmm. da, 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 the dodgeball. Da. <laughs> Knockout City. Knockout City? ball. Knockout. Is it City? Is it City? <laughs> Knockout City. No, I don't think so. Knockout. Knockout. Knockout Kings. City. It is Knockout City. Oh, okay. Um, that was right. Knockout City is my when I'm not feeling like playing anything else. I will play this game. I gotta jump back into that. Yeah. Well, I've completely stopped playing all my first-person shooters, my online first-person shooters, 
because they are all so broken and yeah. just kind of boring now. Um, so that's been my my online kind of cleanser. I need a new game. Yeah. I wish I could quit you, Warzone. <laughs> I wish I could quit you. Have you got your PS5 yet? No, it's, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> oh, right. It's there. It's waiting. You you got you got a couple hundred dollars to spare? No, I have games to lend you. All right, but I need the money. Devil May Cry Devil is May waiting Cry. for you, and it's an incredible game. Yeah, well, it's so good. I, maybe I, maybe I'll do my I'll do my taxes and there you and go. Blow that on. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. <clears throat> so, I don't know. This purchase just happened. We'll see what happens with whatever game is. Uh, announce first with this purchase mm -hmm. we'll see i don't know yeah so. hopeful though let's see what happens hopeful. Hopeful. also uh it's probably gonna be a monopoly but yes you know we'll we'll, we'll deal with that inevitability when it happens yeah no i think the days of you know all these independent studios making these games for these for 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 the two big giants i think i think that's coming to an end man that's coming to an end very quickly yeah and uh, we're just it seems that way. We're just gonna see all right, do you do you make Sony games or do you make Xbox or do you make Microsoft games? That's that's it. And Microsoft has the distinction of being like, Hey yeah, make make games for PC too. We don't give a shit, man. And so, Sony's like Sony's getting no. in there too? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. They were very tough on that before. They were like, Look, they were like Apple. They were like, yeah. You make PlayStation games. Right. And they're like, Yeah, but we want and they grab them by the collar and they're like, You yeah, make man. PlayStation games. <laughs> okay. Get out of here. Okay. And it's good to see that they're kind of breaking out of that. Yeah. Especially, like, letting these games be cross-platform, for instance. That's pretty cool. The the uh, the writing's on the wall. Yeah, it's happening. There's <clears> money <throat> to be made. Mm -hmm. All right. Real quick, we'll do some more sports. Sports! Because people like sports. Uh-huh. And we don't talk about sports a lot, but we do uh, watch sports, and we're into it, but didn't realize that people, like, you know, were really uh, kind of clamoring for the sports talk. <laughs> for more sports talk, yeah. <laughs> so, um, this one, not not really, not really hugely sports related. It's more like uh, just, I don't know, society related and, like, how how these things relate to... Uh, where we are as a society, I guess. Sure. The Washington football team, <laughs> formerly known as the Washington Redskins. Post. Um, <laughs> Washington Post. They they had some they had a they had a sort of reckoning with their team name. Finally, after years and years and years of native people telling them that hey. Redskin, Redskin kind of sucks. Yeah. Um, maybe you should change it. Definitely doesn't feel good to go for a team that has a racial slur in it. They finally caved. And this is no, I, I don't think, it obviously wasn't a moral thing. It was Dan Snyder going, look, I mean, we just, we can't, we can't do this any longer. We can't, we just can't ignore it. Right. Because that's, that was his, that was his idea was to just go, look, fuck off. The team name stays the team name. You mean the uh, the end racism banners everywhere didn't do anything? I don't think that did much. I no. don't know. I don't know. No? Black Lives Matter on the back of a helmet. And that's enough, apparently. I don't know. So they finally decide, uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to do something about this. But we don't have an immediate plan. So in the interim, we're just going to be the Washington football team. And everyone kind of laughed and was like, what? They didn't come up with an alternative? Right. There was so many cool alternatives. The Warriors, the com not the Commanders, the Generals, <laughs> the War Dogs, the or War Hogs. Uh, there, was some, like, there was some good ones. Those are kind, those kind of suck. But there was some good ones in there. I saw some, like, fan uh, uh, ideated... Uh, versions like that included red which i liked personally. yeah oh like, the 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 what's the one with the uh with the um historical uh black pilots oh the red tails the red tails yeah washington red tails would have been cool. cool uh i i saw red wolves 
That would have been cool. The Red, Red Wolves, the Washington Red Wolves, the Red Hawks, Red Hawk. Eh, too many birds. I think we're done with the birds. Okay. With in the NFL, <laughs> I don't know. It's just, just so many Seahawks, the Ravens, the the the. Um, I'm spacing on the rest of them. There's so many. There's too many. Hmm. There's the Ravens. Now you got me thinking. There's the Ravens, the Seahawks, yeah. the Falcons. Falcons, right, right, right. Um, the Eagles. Eagles, yeah. There's uh, a lot of birds. Yeah, there's too, too many. But Red Wolves would have been cool. Yeah. Red Tails would have been the dopest. They. Let me just say for the record. I mean, I know as, as a half-black person, it is more important to me to see shit like that than, I guess, the next person. Mm-hmm. But just on the surface, just on the, just on the, 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 it just sounds cool. Does. Washington Red Tails just sounds cool. Yeah. I think the problem is they would have had to honor them too much. And they were like, dude, we don't <laughs> want to deal with like every year we have to do some Red oh. Tails thing. And we got to honor the guys who were in the thing. And we have to, we have to be fucking, we have to face history and we have to talk about it all the time. Fuck that. Man, we're not doing that. <clears throat> Yuck. So they didn't do that. They didn't do the Red Wolves. It's they didn't do the war dogs. Black. Way too black. They didn't do the warriors. Mm-hmm. They didn't do uh, anything. They didn't even do the <laughs> didn't do anything. They didn't do anything for a year. Yeah. They didn't do anything, and it's they true. were just the, the football Washington team. football team. Right. And let me tell you, for the record, I was fine with it. <laughs> I think a they, lot of people were, dude. Yeah, it's funny that you will just get the things that you'll just get used to. Sure. And I never, after about like three months, I didn't think twice about it. They were just mm. the Washington football, football team, team, and it made sense to me. And like I said at the top, it was a it was a funny reminder of the fact that like this this team <laughs> that was part of this billion dollar company, their their mascot <clears throat> and team name was a racial slur. It felt like duct tape over a racial slur. That's what it felt like to me. Well, what if what it felt like to me was like culpability was like a reminder. Yeah, that mm-hmm. that that you don't get a team name. Yeah, you you guys held on to this shit for way longer than you should have, and you you fought and fought and fought, and these and these people told you year after year to change the name. It wouldn't have been that hard, obviously, mm-hmm. and and you didn't do it because. Dan Snyder just is like thumbing his nose at people and just going, look, it's my fucking team and I'm not changing the name. Go fuck yourself. And it was like, it doesn't have to be this combative. Like sure. people are telling you it's not. And and here's the thing. There are, there are certain instances where maybe people go a little far with like, I'm offended by this or what mm-hmm. have you. This yeah. is not one of those instances. No. And, and I was going to say my barometer for this kind of thing. Cause obviously I like, I don't, I don't, I can't have that personal of an opinion on this because I'm not a Native American. Yeah. Um, but my barometer on anything having to do with race and <clears throat> sensitivity to things like that is, like, speak to the people who it may or may not affect. Right. You know? If you talk to them and they go, yeah, that's offensive, do something about it. Yeah. Simple as that. Yeah. You know, like, I, I, I've seen a lot of people online saying... You know, we shouldn't have changed it in the first place. Uh, it's still going to be Redskins to me, you know, and, and things like that. And it's just like, okay, well, you know, you can stomp your feet and, and, and scream about it. But at the end of the day, if it's if it's offensive to the people who it's supposed to portray in a way, like, you got to let it go. Yeah. Right? Like, <clears throat> you, you just got to let it go. Because yeah. why are you going to be that asshole that's, like, just sticking to your guns because it's something that you grew up with or... You personally like, and it doesn't affect you personally. Yeah, that's very selfish to 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 a uh, very selfish way to live your life and, and interact with people. Yeah, I, I understand having like a uh, connection with with this brand essentially, like this team and the name and it meaning something to you. But at the end of the day, if it's affecting people in a negative way and it's something very easily is eas- easily changeable. I don't see the issue here, man. Right. You know? Well, I mean, it, it, it always is coming from the perspective of people who don't have to deal with things like that. Right. You know? now, I'm, I'm sure the point to one Native American person who's like, eh, I don't care about it. Well, there's, I'm, I'm sure that there's plenty of people who don't give a shit. Sure. That, that's how it always is. You, you can find a black person who's like, eh, I don't care if they say it. 
You know what I mean? Like, it, right. there's always going to be that outlier that you can find. Right, and they will always find that and point that out and say, <laughs> look, they're not bothered by it. Yeah. But that's disingenuous. Yeah. <laughs> so, <clears throat> they go a whole year, a whole season and a half, maybe two seasons, I don't remember the timeline, of being the Washington football team. And then rumors start to start to blossom a little bit in the past couple of weeks that they've landed on a name and they're going to make a big announcement. And then the Washington football team finally does this thing where they're like 222 or 2222. Right. Big announcement coming, which is obviously going to be the team name and all that jazz. <clears throat> then you get um, these leaked photos and uh, without a lot of fanfare, people are like, Oh no! <laughs> they picked one of the worst choices uh, that they could have picked. Yeah, the Washington Commanders. Commanders. And then, uh, well, what's today? Today is two twenty-two. So today they officially announced yeah. that they are, in fact, the Washington, the Washington Commanders. Commanders. Yeah, promo and video and all. It just sounds like a Pop Warner team. It sounds like a team on any given Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like a team from the replacements. The Miami Sharks. <laughs> you know? Like, it, it really does It really does sound that way. The Washington Commanders. Right. It, it, it's, it is quintessential not like this. You know? I, I think that, you know, after a couple seasons, we'll just get used to it, and we won't even think about it. I mean, to your, exactly your point, people get used to stuff. Yeah, very quickly. So it'll, it'll be fine. I, you know, I'm not saying this is the end of the world. I'm not a Washington fan, so I understand if it hits closer to home to people who are. Yeah. Um, I'm a Jets fan and live in pain. Um, it's okay. Every day. Um, but that being said, it's going to be all right. You know, like you're still going to support. Go ahead and call them the Redskins at home if you really feel like you need to. But some people, man. You know, it it is what it is. We got to move forward. It sucks, though. I agree. <laughs> Commanders is not Commander a good name. It's Commander just not sucks. Commander sucks. I it wish sucks. there. I <laughs> wish there was a veto button that the you know the entire nation could push <laughs> at one time because I feel like we would. Um, they should have left it to a fan vote. They should have let people. That would have been awesome. Yeah, yeah, they they shouldn't have. They shouldn't have done this whole. We're gonna keep it a secret thing. It feels like. It feels like they picked this like out of spite or out of like safeness like this is the one most inoffensive thing that we can pick it's obviously the worst choice but it's it's the safest thing that we can pick and i think that people will say well yeah that's because of cancel culture these guys are afraid to even take a risk right and what i say to that is no it's not the same thing these guys, these guys, these guys, you make it, you, you, you can still make it a, a, a well-informed good choice. It doesn't have to be, I don't know why people are always conflating these things just because they had to go through this whole process with the, with changing the Redskins name. Now, all of a sudden they can't take any more risks. They have to be sure. super safe. They have to pick like the, the, the the easiest path and whatnot and it's like that's not the case no the problem is and i think that this is a problem with all of race relations is a thing like this happens and people think that now you have to go into the completely opposite direction you have to overcorrect. sure right and i think that the problem is you are skipping the step where you educate yourself on what the problem was to begin with. It, it's a it's a shock reaction. It's like jumping into a cold shower and suddenly you just want to jump out and right. run across the street. Right. You know, I, I feel like a lot of people need to just take a second and sit with it and go, okay, this is why red skin is an offensive term. Yeah. Maybe not to everybody, but this is why it could <clears throat> potentially offend people. Yeah. I don't care if it's been around for 100 years. You know, why in today's date would this be offensive? And then you you think about it, you sit with it, and then you go, okay, let's avoid things like that. 
but we can still make it awesome. Yeah. They're still, I mean, this is the same argument you can have with, you know, these comics who are saying that we can't joke anymore. Yes. It's like, okay, think for a second. Just think for a second, a little bit, like a second longer than you have, <clears throat> and consider ways that you can make funnies without, you know, disparaging people or, you know, hurting someone or making someone feel lesser than if it's not necessary for your act. Yeah. I mean, this is that. That's exactly the the point that I was that I was getting to, was that that yeah, that's exactly it. It it has a far reaching, far more reaching thing where, it's like, just sit and try to understand why, the this is the way that it is. If for so long, this this we're we're now having this, this age of reckoning with all of this stuff, and maybe it's coming, really quickly. And it's happening to a lot of people faster than they thought, and it's hard for them to kind of catch up to, well, yesterday I was able to say this joke, or yesterday I was able to say Washington Redskin, and now today I can't say it. Yeah. What the fuck? Sure. Sure. But then just sit with it for a second and try to try to figure it out. I mean, I've seen plenty of comedy acts, for instance, white people going on stage and making fun of the like cancel culture and their own whiteness and uh the expectations of being white in 2022 like they i've seen that and they make good jokes that like take the piss out of their own situation while also kind of taking the piss out of like society and all this stuff and there's a well-balanced way of doing it Mm. if you can't think of a joke that doesn't end with a racial slur or like some worn out stereotype a bad accent yeah that people were doing in like fucking deaf comedy jam in 1995 like dog that's your problem right if you're not clever enough to come up with a joke you're a comedian you spend your entire life your entire it's day your job yeah come up with a better joke <laughs> sorry you can't evolve i mean it, that, I, it, it's hard for me to feel sorry for people who like you spend your entire life coming up with jokes and now you can't come up with anything because you can't make fun of minorities. Look, I, I get you're angry because it's harder. You have to think a little harder. You gotta you gotta push that much more to to consider things like that. But I mean, I I feel like if you take a second and think about it, it is for the good of society. And you can the. There are masterful comedians who can still make the same jokes, same kind of jokes, if they're done properly, still be funny, and and pe- you know people are gonna find anything offensive. It does. It really sure. doesn't matter. There's there is no there's no complete <clears throat> winning here. No, I, I'm not saying like you're gonna please everyone. That's that should never be your 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 uh, I guess main focus. It should be to be entertaining. But in saying that. If you know you're, if you know you are punching down at someone who you know doesn't have enough as much representation as you, potentially, um, you probably should rethink that. That's what I mean by it's for essentially the greater good. The greater good. You need to maybe think about other people before you start saying stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Or, or or start naming yourself things like the Redskins, yeah. which obviously was, you know, created in a different time, and that's okay. We accept that. No one's saying, you know, no one can say the Washington Redskins ever again, or else you go to jail. Right. However, we probably shouldn't in 2022 have a team that we continue to root for called the Washington Redskins. Yeah. It's as simple as that. I mean, we just went through the bird names of of teams. <laughs> There's so many the birds. Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah. You telling me if somebody had come up with that in 2022, you'd be like, "What the fuck? The Eagles? That sucks." Yes. The Philly cheesesteaks. Let's do that. Yeah. So, it's <laughs> we'll get used to it. It'll be fine. Everything will be fine. It's okay. Just because it was a certain way doesn't mean it has to continue to be a certain sure. way. Sure. We uh, that, it's, it's scary for a lot of people, you know. A lot of people they they grow up with something and they don't want to let it go. I get it, but it's the way it goes, man. Just the way it is. You bend or you break. So 
That's right. And if it makes, you know, even a fraction of the Native American people in this country <laughs> who are still around uh, any more comfortable being here, then I think it's worth it, personally. And, and you know, on top of that, it it is something that, you know, obviously, hopefully, will make them feel more comfortable. But at the same time, it's like, why would you want your team name to be something that is considered a racial slur. Think about that. Mm. But think about that for a second. <clears throat> if you're somebody who's on the team or somebody who's represented by the team and someone tells you, hey, man, to a large majority of us, that is a racial slur. And your response to that is, sorry. sorry. It's just what we've been called forever. Don't get offended, please. Like, why would you want – it's one thing to – again, like, if somebody comes up to you and says, like, you shouldn't call your team name the Eagles, it's offensive to Eagles. Then you, you kind of tell that person, sure. like, calm down, relax. A little common sense, yeah. you know. But if there, if it's an actual racial slur and, some, and, and you have people coming to your office every year going, hey, did you think about changing that team name? And right. then your response is, sorry. It's just historic. What do you want us to do? Yeah. And now, mind you, there are notable exceptions. Think about, like, FSU, Seminoles, <clears throat> where this this school gives money to the Seminole tribe to this day. Yeah. Uh, in order to make sure that it's okay that they even, you know, kind of uh, take on that name. Well, and, and Seminole is not... Redskin? No, it's not. There's a very clear difference. You're wearing a brave hat right now. Yeah, it's um, funny we're talking about it. <laughs> yeah. And that this is one that's like borderline. Sure, and the tomahawk chop. The tomahawk chop. We've talked yeah. about that, that a lot. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, uh, speaking of, wow, uh, I didn't even dude. think about that. I was uh, yeah. the whole time. Well, I was, uh, I was laughing to myself internally as you're talking about it, looking at your Braves hat. Yeah. Um, but I didn't want to say anything because you were on a roll. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, like there, there is nuance to this, is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there are ways to, to, you know, in 2022, kind of do this in an appropriate way. Red skin is a step too far, though. Yeah, for a lot of people. And again, I'm not saying this is like trying to be this white knight to save the Native American culture, because I'm not a part of that. But even having any level of empathy i can see how that could be offensive if there was a team called the brown skins and their their mascot was like a, a i don't know a generic latino yeah i would be a little offended by that you yeah. know and, and the fact that people are, are sticking to their guns on this and saying like no it needs to be this yeah because it's what i grew up with you know fuck yeah. off yeah like and, and <laughs> who I, cares about your 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 sports team and you can you can say whatever you want, but if there was a team called like the Washington Whiteys, white people would be like, eh, "That's a little weird." I know that they would like they would laugh it off because that's what they do because but they're able to exactly yeah exactly yeah. yeah. And you have to think of it in an inverted world in which white people weren't the major the majority and you know weren't <clears throat> having this privilege in our society. I'm sorry, I said white privilege. Deal with it. Down votes, I feel them. Oh I feel God. the down votes, I just feel them. You have to put yourself in, in, in that perspective You've done it and again. then ask yourself that question. Mm -hmm. Would the white skins work? The I don't think they would. White skins. It has I, better alliteration. It's true. That's, uh, that alliteration goes a long way. <laughs> it does. I will say that. So it does. You maybe like, a you bad like example. alliteration, you know? Maybe a bad example. Washington white skins. Yeah, I kind of like it. <laughs> <laughs> whoops <laughs> accidentally made it better all right <clears throat> well we are here we are you know um, we are we are here, here we, we are, are. <laughs> indeed uh what's today the second we've got two weeks to the super bowl and then next season we should see the washington commanders running out on the field and hopefully they do a little bit better than this year because nothing <laughs> <laughs> not a team name change, not a city uh -huh. change, not a color change is going to change the fact that that team still sucks. Yeah. So, hopefully they get it together. Hopefully people want to play for the Commanders. If the Jets want to rebrand, I'm all for it if it gets them better players. Nothing's going to help the Jets. Uh, 
draft. Sorry, draft. Hey man, the, the Seahawks draft. didn't play this play that well this year either. Yeah. Uh, Russell Wilson is probably gonna leave. Yeah. So that sucks. We're gonna lose our franchise quarterback. Um. So yeah, it's gonna be a rebuild year for a couple of years. So all the people who said <laughs> for a lot of people in like twenty. 20- 12 2013 that i was jumping on the bandwagon here i am still a seahawks fan and now the team sucks and they're gonna suck for probably the next couple of years you're still here and i'm still here all right join me so join we just we're just fans of bad teams <laughs> join, now. join me being sad and eating too many chicken wings on super, on, on sundays that's right on I'm, football sundays i'm trying to get uh and mondays. i'm trying to get sunday off did i tell you this no super bowl yes, sunday i'm you trying did. To, I, I, I tell you, you this. did you okay, did. I'm trying to get it off so <clears throat> either we go somewhere or I might I might do something at the house. I'll let you know. Okay. I'll keep I'll keep you updated. All right, all right, all right. All right. So before we can get the fuck out of here, you know what we have to do, right? It's cheers of the week time. It's the isn't cheers it? of the week. That's right. Oh. Obi, please start us off and let us know what you have for the <sighs> cheers of the week. My cheers of the week goes to the album. Uh, well, no, the the group Black Star. Okay. I just oh let me. I say that because I uh, I don't know. If Y'all know about this about me. Y'all, but I've been doing my part to uh, to help my my uh, my fitness, my 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 physical health mm-hmm. in walking every single day. Get on your fitness, getting on my fitness, and uh, I I enjoy listening to albums uh, and playlists as I walk around, and I decided to jump into the the Black Star album. Um, for the first time in, I mean, it's probably been at least three years since I've given it a listen. That's so weird that you listened to it recently because yeah. I listened to it like last month. Wow. But but you go ahead. But I did just listen to it all the way through. Yeah, I don't know what I don't know <clears> why. <throat> I think it was because I had kind of somewhat recently listened to some of Talib Kweli's uh, podcasts because mm. they're on YouTube actually. I, didn't, mm. I don't know if you know that, but Mm-mm. he he posts them on there. Um, and I I, had, I remember I had seen the one with Tom Segura on it. Well, he got kicked off of Twitter, so. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I watched the one with Tom Segura on it, and he talked about Blackstar mm-hmm. on it. And said, like, how would you guys do that? And, you know, Talib was like, that was kind of like a time and place thing, like. We were both in like this, this place in our lives that we felt like we needed to do something, like, special, and so we did. And for some reason, like midway through my walk, I remembered that conversation. I was like, I haven't listened to that album in a long time. Let me just put it on. Yeah. And I did, <clears throat> and I had my big Sony headphones on. I had the the over the ears because it was cold out, and I'm like, yeah, do it. Might as well warm up. Warm up the ears while I'm walking. Mm-hmm. And I was just, like, I was mind blown all over again. Top to bottom. Just incredible. Incredible. Like, and it has its moments, but consistently throughout it is just, like, it's a masterpiece. Yeah. It is a masterpiece album. So, if you're a fan of hip-hop, even if you're not, I recommend this as, like, it's, it's like an inflection point of of hip hop in its time and place. Yeah. Um and it feels like a timeless album. Um <clears throat> one of the best first three tracks. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh of, yeah. Of all time. Big time. The the bass line uh, boom boom. Uh-huh. Boom boom ba boom boom. Incredible. S- stupid. Incredible. Stupid. I know that makes no sense if you don't know what I'm talking about. Well, listen to the album and listen to the album yeah. and you'll get it. I mean, just I, I I feel like I was I was genuinely surprised how well it it kept up and like uh, just how surprised I was at like how good it is. Yeah, truly, even as an adult, because sometimes I go back and listen to an album that I loved <clears throat> in like high school, and I'm like, it's fine, but it has its hits and misses. But mm-hmm. this one, no, consistently top to bottom, <clears throat> Stone Cold classic. 
I loved it. And also, I pulled that cheers the week out of my ass. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> you got me for a second. But I was able to think of something to be there grateful for. There you go. For. Good. So Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. That's good. Hey, man, listen. Uh, like I said, I listened to it randomly. I don't know why. I don't remember what was the genesis of the idea of listening to it. But it is an incredible feat. Not not just because like the album itself is just a- a- amazing, but that like it it was the jumping off point for both Mos and Talib Kweli. And you listen to Talib Kweli's first album with High Tech, Reflection Eternal is technically his like first out al- first solo album. Sure. Um, if you really want to be technical, Quality is his first solo album, and Quality is incredible. Reflection Eternal is amazing. Yeah, Reflection Eternal <coughs> is incredible. It I, is. I love that album. And Most Def's debut album, Black on Both Sides, is and remains one of my favorite albums ever created. Uh, I've talked about it on the show, but Most is like probably the biggest influence on my hip hop career and like why I why I even make rap music in the first place. But it all starts with Black Star album. Yeah. And without that, you probably don't get any of that. Mm-hmm. You know. So you listen to that album, and I mean, yeah, it's just it's it it holds up to this yeah. day. It's so so good. So if you want an education on Ruckus Records and what it meant to be an underground rapper in like ninety eight to two thousand one, <laughs> uh, listen to that Black Star album. Yeah. So there you go. <clears throat> Thieves in the Night, one of the best one one of, one of the best uh, uh, courses of all time. Yes. Yes. Uh. I'm not a, you know, sometimes I don't really like, like, super wordy choruses, but that one, it's, like, probably the best or one of the best really wordy choruses. It's great. It's great. It's so deep. It is. All of it is, and they, they interfold into each other so, so perfect. <sighs> yeah. Their styles just work, like chocolate and peanut butter and i think that's probably why they're so hesitant to do another one because yeah. they're like how are we gonna top that which and it's I, been too long i understand and respect completely they they've mentioned before <clears throat> separately that they've recorded stuff together since then they, they seem to have basically a black star album just sitting there yeah but they don't want to release it because <clears throat> well they have the one album there was a rumored album that was supposed to just be called aretha where they sampled a bunch of Aretha Franklin stuff and they rapped on it and they released like two tracks. It's actually one of the uh, um, record store day releases with the we we both got the Black Star yes. uh, yep, and yep. it was like a single uh-huh. and that was supposed to be yeah. the jumping off point for the record and then it just never happened. Never happened, yeah, yeah. So they're sitting on they're sitting on tracks. I think it's Moses' fault, honestly. Yeah, he's the one. Like I think Quali would, would. I think he put it Yassin. out tomorrow if he could. Yasin Bay. Yasin Bay. I think it's Yasin's fault because he put out an album called Negus and it was like just a have you heard about this vaguely it was a it was like a um museum oh, uh, right. yeah right, right. so but it was like an experience you had to yes, be there you had to, to be to... there you only could listen right. to the album if you actually showed up to i think it was at the moma the museum of modern art in, in new york city new york yeah and if you were there when he was doing the exhibit, you could listen to the album. But other than that, no one ever heard the record. And it's right. like, hey, man, why are you doing this stuff? It's cool and all, but. <laughs> I'll tell you what. The Ecstatic is, I think, one of the – I think it's one of the greatest rap albums ever made. And it's not one on the, streaming services. No. He took sucks. it down. He took it down. <laughs> Luckily, yeah. I bought it, so I have it on my phone. But Good, good. <clears throat> um, I think, yeah, I think it's one of the, I think. Can you buy it on iTunes? I don't know. I haven't even looked. If I if I can, I'm going to because I miss that album. It's great. Yeah. I think it's, I think, for my money, it's one of the most underrated albums ever made. Yeah. Because most, he had Black on Both Sides, and then he had The New Danger, which was a super weird, like, departure from people weren't ready for that. It was right, right, like, right. And then he puts out True Magic. And True Magic feels like this bootleg, like, oh, here's 14 throwaway songs. And everyone basically turned their backs on him Mm. after that. And then he puts out the ecstatic. (laughs) And people, whoever listened to it was like, holy fucking shit. This album is amazing. It's funny you say that because, like, I had, like, I only peripherally listened to Most Def before the ecstatic. Mm -hmm. And 
like I I I, I listened to back Black on both sides. I think at that point I had listened to Black Star, but beyond that I didn't follow his career. Yeah, and I saw he was like in movies and stuff, and I'm like, all right, well I don't know what's going on with him anymore. But when the Ecstatic came out, I remember I listened to it on a whim, and I was like, okay, <laughs> what are we doing here? Because uh-huh. this is incredible. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, I have a very I have like vivid memory, like time place memories of the Ecstatic as an album when it came out and there's only a handful of albums that i have that with yeah um so uh that's another one another recommendation for you right if you can find it because it's not on streaming services (laughs) we'll see it's on itunes i don't know yeah look it up that's on you guys yeah or go to a record store yeah find it in the i do want to buy it on vinyl i would love to find it on vinyl that would be cool that'd be cool all right, <clears throat> let's uh, do my cheers. It's going to be a quick one, um, and then we can get the fuck out of here. My cheers of the week goes to a man by the name of Josh Wardle. Josh Wardle. Who created the online sensation, Wardle. Yes. This has taken the nation by storm. Pretty much every mo- everyone and their mother is playing it. Yep. Once a day, you get a puzzle. Everyone gets the same word. It's a word scramble, basically. Mm-hmm. But you don't get the letters. And you have to figure this game out. Five-letter word. Five-letter word. Six chances. Yep. <clears throat> and you get... Uh, it tells you what letters are in the word. Uh, if you use the right letters in the right spot. Or if the, wor- if the letter doesn't... Or if the word doesn't have those letters. It's mm-hmm. a very simple game. Yep. The... EU or the UI is super simplistic. It is perfect. Every day you just go, hmm, I wonder what the word was. I'm <laughs> yes. going to spend 20 minutes on this or I'm going to spend all day on this. I'm going to just keep popping in and try to figure this thing out. I'm going to be honest. It's my poopy time activity. Yeah. It's great. It works. It's you perfect. You sit there and you go, what word I got? It's amazing. Yeah. When I saw people posting about it, I was like, not another. I don't care. And then I right. jumped into it, and I was like, I, this is my new addiction. I love this. I love the simplicity of it. I love the the the. It's just it's just a thing. It's just it if it, it, it felt to me like a news ground thing of like a just like a, a new weird, grounds. huh? New grounds. New grounds. Yes. Of just like just this weird. We're all. Whoever is like involved, we all get it. If you're yeah. not in it, you don't get it, yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. And I loved that. And uh, I, my cheers doesn't go to Wordle the game; it goes to Josh Wordle the creator for two reasons. Number one, he created this really simple game for apparently he created it for his wife, mm-hmm. and that's a super sweet story. That he just, you know, that's a nice thing. And also because the man secured the bag. He's His wife is <laughs> much happier today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He sold it to the New York Times. Right. And, you know, he got his money. So shout out to Josh Wordle. But R.I.P. to Wordle the game. Yeah. It's over. It's, it's not. Over, yeah. uh, they're they're going to put it behind a paywall. It, it, will be, it, will, it will be free initially. Yeah, that's. So. Yeah. Um, you're going to see ads all over the place. And if you don't see ads all over the place, you will have to pay a subscription sure. to it. It's coming soon. You heard it here first, and you heard it all over Twitter. It's happening. So get your words in get as quickly in. as you can yeah. because they're taking it from us like all of these corporations take everything good from us. Shout out to Josh for getting for, – for you know he secured the bag, mm-hmm. and I'm not mad at the dude. If I was in his shoes, I probably would have done the same thing yeah. because he's working on all this other shit, and then out of nowhere – his little pet project blows up. Right. And then the New York Times is like, we'll give you X amount of millions of dollars. They said it's in the low seven figures. So he's like, yo, fucking take sure. that shit. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah. And I don't fault the guy even no. in the slightest. No, no, no. So nope. shout out to him securing the bag. But man, I wish I had a couple months with Wordle and not like a couple weeks <laughs> before it was fucking bastardized by some corporation. So well, enjoy the time you have. That's right. <clears throat> Let's All right. get out of here. Let's get the fuck out of here. Yeah. So tonight's brew was from Founders. It's part of their Barrel Age series. It's the Backwoods Bastard. It's an ale aged in oak 
bourbon barrels and obi please tell the people what you uh, <laughs> thought about this brew it got on my glasses i'm sorry um very sweet um but i did get a lot of the notes that it described um which was surprising to me because the uh, founders is pretty easily uh no plan intended found mm -hmm. uh marco you got this at Publix, right i did so it's not like this super niche you know you never heard of it <clears throat> kind of brewery uh, but i think they did a really good job of handling this you know aged bourbon barrel uh kind of beer um, let me just say for the record uh Publix, and i don't know wherever you're listening Publix is a local place in the southeast region and it's it's our lo it's our Kroger's it's our like local grocery store, and they've been getting like big name craft brews. Yeah, they have now every fucking. Um, I mean, I saw a Hidden Springs in there, and really? I don't even think yeah the 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 Orange Crush is in there. Interesting. And I didn't think that that was even yeah it's just, and they're able to charge too much money for it. But <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah. It is what it is. They're getting like, you know, big name craft breweries. And yeah. I think part of that is probably because a lot of these craft breweries are selling to the big companies. Oh, for sure, for sure. We just lost uh, Cigar City. We didn't really talk about this, mm. but Cigar City sold to Monster Energy Drink. What? Yeah, dude. Yeah. That hurts. So, again, shout out to those guys for securing the bag. But of it's course. like, uh, yeah. yeah. For the products, we'll see what what impact that has. <coughs> Man, that sucks a yeah, little bit. It's tough. Uh, it's tough. <laughs> well, any any hooser, yeah. any hooser. Mm -hmm. um, I really enjoyed this one. I, I I thought it may be a little overly sweet for my palate because I'm more of a um, I don't know. I tend to be I I tend to edge more towards the IPA side of the world of beers, mm -hmm. not world of beer, the world of beers. Nah. Um. But this one actually, I don't know. It, it it works out. It works very well for me based on the flavors and the balance. Again, balance is the biggest word that we can use here, um, as far as between it being sweet but not too sweet. Um, thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Took me a second. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like what they got going on here, man. I'm giving it a five. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that I gave the Spencers last week a 5.5. .5. You did, yeah. I was pleasantly, pleasantly surprised by this. I think this is... I don't know. I don't know. Let's look on... Let's give a quick little untapped. Maybe we should start looking at untapped on the show and kind of seeing what the... the consensus is? Yeah. yeah. Cons cons consensus is. <laughs> we, should, we should mention these are 11%. Yet again, we mentioned it. <laughs> Consensus. Sorry. Founders. Uh, backwoods bastard. Let's see if the backwoods comes up. Here it is, right here. A Scotch ale. So the consensus is a four point one two. Okay. We heavy. I, I I'm also gonna give it a five. Okay. I think we're gonna we're gonna go unanimous five on this one. I think nice. I think it's um I was pleasantly surprised by the uh you know, you get the you get the initial boozy kind of hit of I mean it, it is eleven eleven point what? Eleven point five or no eleven percent. Eleven percent. You get that initial boozy hit, but like that that what what you're left with is very, very pleasant. S super smooth. Yeah. Yeah. The initial kick Surprisingly. I feel that, that like bourbon barrel kind of toasty kick mm -hmm. in, in the front of your mouth but then it just it's very smooth kinda, after that kind of dissipates and it and it and it and it leaves you yeah it's this nice like leathery smoothness mm -hmm. on the palate woody that it, I'm like, it reminds me of like almost like a really really nice scotch yeah yeah you know? yeah, yeah 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 like yeah, where it hits yeah, yeah. you at, at, in the front but then it's like oh this is dangerous it's, mm -hmm. it's very smooth it's very nice mm -hmm. it deceives you into thinking it's not dangerous but yes it is yeah so, uh, Confessive yeah. <laughs> is uh, a five for this. If you can find this at your local local grocery store, which we were able to, and this is, uh, I think they're out of Grand Rapids, Michigan, if I'm not 
mistaken. Where are you from? Where are you from? Where are you from, girl? What's that you claim? Yep, Grand Rapids. You're right. Grand Rapids, Michigan. So hopefully, you know, you guys, should, they, hopefully they are distributing to most grocery stores throughout the nation. And you guys can grab this because uh, I would highly recommend it. So. I too. All right. Well, then let's get the fuck out of here. This has been the One Bear In Podcast for myself, Marco Dupa, for Adam Obesius Rodriguez. Mando! Thank you guys for listening. Drink delicious beer and have a beautiful week. We love you.